in the theme of today, be a godly leader, I want first of all to say, all of us are leaders, not based on your personality, not based on your giftings, not based on your, on your skill and your, all the things that you can do, because of that you're a leader. No, you're a leader because the God of the universe is living in you. The leader of heaven and earth is in you. You're not a leader if Christ is not in you. But if Christ is in you and you allow him to be who he is, you are a leader. So may God give you the capacity and the, and the ability through his grace to understand how to let go and let God. Hey, How to understand I'm crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but the leader of the universe, heaven and earth, is le leading and living through me. So leadership starts with that place. Your revelation of who is the leader. And if you can have that, you can walk this road with Christ. And then leadership will not be a curse in your life. But if leadership is first based on your skills and your ability and your personality, then leadership can so quickly be a curse. So quickly come and stand between you and Christ. Hallelujah. Now I have day words. Some of you guys know that with the day words, the prophetic words that you write in December, you write the prophetic words for every day. And the words for this week, this past week, has a lot, had a lot to do with a few characters in the Bible. And I just want to lift out seven points, if you can go with me in this. The first one is from Samuel, about Mr. Samuel. Okay. 1 Samuel 2, 1 Samuel 2, for those who can come with me, verse 18. But Samuel was ministering before the Lord. But Samuel was ministering before the Lord. And verse 21 says, where are we now? The boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. You as a leader, I want to say, grow up in his presence. Can you write that down? Grow up in his presence. You can grow up in the presence of your flesh, in the presence of your temptation, in the presence of your intimidation, in the presence of your fear. But you're going to grow up to be what? But I bless you, I pray that you will understand how to grow up in the presence of God. That's a different, different type of growing up. You're all going to grow, we're all going to grow. We're going to grow to become more immature. Well, we're going to grow up to be mature in Christ. We're going to grow up to be less of me, more of Him. Some growth is going to take place, if I like it or not. I will grow in religion, I will grow in staleness i will grow in how to compromise anybody uh, uh, experience that in your life you start to compromise in something and then you are shocked one month later what happened to you how this thing grew in you this compromising where it's okay to be just chilled and don't really get out to god and to the word and with one another and later it's just it's okay it's it's not it's okay it's just, okay, we are just flowing through. May God help you in your leadership. I bless you with that. Every man, every woman here, that you will grow up in the presence of God like Samuel did. Oh, they were all the others. Verse 17 said, The sin of the young men was very great in the Lord's sight, for they were treating the Lord's offering with contempt. But it was all about what can I get out of this? And they were not necessarily just sneaky. But my brother, my sister, you sitting here, I'm here. When we are busy with God, when we are busy with his word, is it about what I get out of it? How is my focus? Or is it about him and his presence? And that in that place, to grow up not in an opinion, but to grow up in, in who I can be, who you can be as his child, who you can be, Hello, to love him and to respect him and to be with him. 
May that be the essence in how you will grow up in Christ. Amen. Grow up. Everybody say, grow up in his presence. 1 Samuel 2. Right. Second one was from Job. Mr. Job. Job 34, verse 4. Just this scripture, scriptures as a prophetic word from December that I got for this week. Verse 4 says, Let us discern for ourselves what is right. Let us learn together what is good. I've written here, let's learn together what is good. Let's learn together what is good. As a leader, my brother, my sister, it's not just you and you alone. You and you alone, and then you compare your leadership with others, and then it's a performance towards one another. We're supposed to learn together. We're supposed to learn together how to lead. How must the leader, Jesus Christ, lead through us? In your business, how must you lead? In your studies, in your work, in your future, in your dreams, in your destiny, in your desires, in your vision, in your relationships. How must he lead in and through you? Let us learn together. Leader on his own, no, his own kingdom. His own kingdom. Not blessing from God, curse. But if it's all about his kingdom, God died for a people. Not just for you. Not just for me. He died for a people. His dream wasn't just me or you. It was for a people. So if we understand the context, then it's not me and this guy or just that one and that one, that one, that one I, I like. Then I start to get kingdom perspective. Amen? What can you learn from your brother and sister around you? Don't try to perform and think how you know everything. The more mature I am, the more I realize I need others. The more immature, then you're the main peanut in the parking lot. You know, you can do the thing. and you, you, You're on your own. No, may God help us to grow up. Amen? Let's learn together what is good. Because we can do, and it's not just the thing of... What must we do? What must we not do? What is right? What is wrong? But good has to do with quality. Let us learn together what is quality. What is a quality lifestyle? What is quality relationships? You can do all the relationships right. But it's not necessarily quality. You can go through all the motions and do all your stuff. And fool yourself and become, the more you fool yourself, the more fake you become. Fool yourself to become fake. Hello? No, in Jesus' name. But you can make that decision today. Hello? Are you with me? May God help us that we will learn together what is quality before the Lord. God created. And after he created, he looked and said, it was good. It's quality. God said, this is quality. May we learn how to see as he sees it. Amen. In your leadership. Godly leader, number three. Talking about Gideon. Judges. When we go to Judges, then we find Judges 6, verse 12. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And verse 13, Gideon said, A pardon me, my Lord. <laughs> Excuse me, let us first discuss this <laughs> before you say I'm a mighty warrior. Uh, interesting, this verse 15, Gideon says again, Pardon me, my Lord. <clears throat> my brother, my sister, declare. No, sorry, point three. Remember, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Please write that down. Remember, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. You know why you can be a mighty warrior? Only because God is with you. If God is not with you, there's no way you can be a mighty warrior. Impossible. Why are you a mighty warrior? Just because God said it. 
gemis. Now, Mr. Gideon said, no, uh, uh, pardon me, Lord, let's just think about this. This is what happened. This is what happening. I'm the least of the least tribes, and this is our situation. I can reason away the authority God has given me. But if you're a leader and you stand as a leader, you better hear what the leader is saying about you, who you are. If the commander-in-chief tells this man, you're a corporal, he cannot there, because of personality and because of self-image, stand and argue with the commander-in-chief the whole day uh, why he cannot be the corporal because he's not this, because this is not good enough. Because There's a battle out there. There's some things that must happen. Hello? So, to personally, the whole time, I must sort out some personal stuff the whole time. Yes, I must. I must grow. But somewhere there's a job to be done. Are you with me? And I cannot later use it as an excuse because I must need to sort out stuff in my life. So I'm just waiting on the Lord. It's the commander in chief telling the man, you're the, co you're the corporal, can you lead this group? They must go there. And now we must sort out first the issues because we must do this because of love and because of relationship. It must be, it better be. But that then we must give attention to and sort it out so that the job can be done. Oh, okay, are you still here? Good. Otherwise, we become, what, I don't know what's the word, petty. Um, and just always sitting with some issue with somebody or with something. And at the end of the day, God is there busy with what he wants to do in the kingdom. You can be a spectator and uh, it's okay, but you're not involved. That's not God's plan for your life. Amen. And I know we can get hurt. I know we are disappointed by people. I know we had certain expectations. And I know a lot of that stuff didn't happen. But that, does that minimize God's authority over your life? And because of this, all that all happened, Lord, I'm sorry, but I cannot have that respect for you. And I will not necessarily now do what you, do, what, what you expect me to do because I have all these stuff that I must first sort out. So you need to pass me by. Hey, that, that doesn't work. It, it cannot work like that. Amen. Are you with me? So work on it to work out your salvation, the word says. Work at it to be set free. Work at it to be, get healed. Work at it to get past the circumstances and the past and all the things. You need to make work with that. You net, need to get out of those stuff. Because if the commander-in-chief says, now... Because you respect him, you honor him, you live for him, then now you will do what he asks of you. Amen. I'm talking to leaders. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. If you believe it or not, that is where God started. He doesn't explain to him because this and because that and because that and because that. See that you are a mighty warrior. No. There's, there's no point of discussion. There's no point of discussion. You're a mighty warrior, finish. And just for one reason, because I'm with you. Because the leader of the universe is with you. That's why you are a mighty warrior. Finish. Now, he must, now God must sort out this, this stuff with, with Gideon, with all his arguing and figuring things out. But my brother, at the end of the day, you in your leadership must decide, I will have respect for God's opinion about my leadership. I will respect what God said about my life, who I am. I'm not a mighty warrior because I'm better than that guy. No. It's just because God said so. Amen. Number four. Peter. Acts 2. We go for Acts 2. That was the other word in this week. Acts 2 from 11. They said, we hear them declaring 
the wonders of God in our own tongues. This was, was it, were the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was poured out. And in that place, amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Some were totally confused and said, no man, these guys, what's happening? This is pathetic. This is, this is rubbish. This is nonsense. This is, hello? And you won't believe it. Many times when God will work in your life, your flesh wants to say, oh, no man. No, I don't understand anything. And then you chase away the devil. Meanwhile, God is working in your life. Hello? And you in your leadership, you as a leader, need to come into the place of learning when the Holy Spirit is working. And not just evaluate what's happening around you. This is the moment when the Holy Spirit is coming down. And f what, what is seen is interpreted as what on earth is happening. Anybody been there in their lives? That sometime in your life you feel... What on earth is happening? What is happening? I don't understand what's happening now. And many times that was the moment where God really, really, really is working in you. And as a leader, you cannot lose it. You need to hear from God. What, what are you saying? Now we look at, let's carry on. Then Peter stood up. With the eleven, raised his voice. He stood up and he raised his voice above all this. And he addressed the crowd, fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. My brother, my sister, if you're a leader in the midst of chaos, when things are going rough, you're supposed to be able to stand up and say, listen carefully to what I say. Listen carefully to what I say. Why did he have the boldness? Let's go on. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. When you know the word of God, more and more, my brother, my sister, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of things that will happen around you, you will be able to stand up and say, this is what was spoken. Why? Because you know the word. In your leadership, when you speak, you must speak forth that what is coming from the word. Ah, uh, hello, I mean, That what is coming. But if you don't know the word of God, if Peter didn't know anything about Joel and the prophecies and everything that was spoken, how will you understand how to rise up? But you must stand up with the word of God and bring accuracy in the situation as a leader. And even in the midst of things where, where it looks like chaos and everybody wants to walk away from the chaos, no, you must not walk away from that chaos. In the chaos, you must give the definition of what is God saying? What is God doing in the midst of this chaos. You cannot do that if you don't know the word. You can give your own opinion. And the guys will be misled. But in your leadership, your stature is through the word of God. Your insight is through the word of God. So that when people thought, when they thought these guys, they had too much to drink. And the other said, we are now totally confused. What is happening? And confusion is rising up like never before. In the whole city. Suddenly there's just confusion and everybody rises up and these guys are making jokes of them and that, those guys are doing this. And at that moment, that same moment, this man rises up and he says, this is what is happening. This is what God is saying. What's that point? Declare, this is what was spoken. By who? This is what was spoken. By the Holy Spirit through Matthew. This is what was spoken through the Apostle Peter. This is what was spoken through Isaiah. This is what was spoken through John in Revelation. What will happen in the end time? This is what was spoken and this is what will happen. Hello. 
end time, we see Jesus with a teaching that he's giving about the end time. There's two major themes. That what will be very intensely, eternally destructive. With fire. That what will, will be de very destructive. And that what will be birthed. Birth pangs. That it was not nice. Birth pangs, it, it seems to me, it's not necessarily nice. Hello? So uh, an intensity for the birthing and a fire in a destructiveness for, to destroy that what is not from God. This, so that what, was, what is from God will come forth in beauty. This, so that what is from his heart will be birthed. The word as a seed. The incorruptible seed. Because of the seed in the church, through prayer and faith and declaration, will be birthed the end time church. The bride of Christ. Hello? And these two will happen the whole time. Now the word says, this is going to happen and that is going to happen and the, the, the wars and the, all these pestilence and all this stuff is going to happen. But still it's not the end. And then this will happen and this will happen and this will happen and still it's not the end. You remember that verse? The following verse? And the gospel will be preached to all the nations and then the end will come. Not with the birth pangs, not with the fire and all the chaos. That's not the end. What did we just say now with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? It was like chaos, but the word of God came through. Phew. So today, tomorrow, how will you stand in the midst of chaos where, where deception will come more and more and more and more and more? The scripture says the man, hallelujah, English, the man van die sien van die verderf moet geopenbaar word. The devil, the fullness of hell, I want to say, will be exposed. Hell will be exposed. And one of the, the, the signs from hell will be Deception. What was it in the Garden of Eden? It was all about deception. He must deceive Eve. She, I need to get Eve to be deceived. Are you with me? So more in the end time, deception, deception, deception will knock at your door. Will knock. Deception will knock every day through this, through that, through that. It will knock, it will knock, and it will not stop knocking. If you don't get into the word, you will be deceived. But in Jesus' name, it will not happen because we will get into the word. Amen? Are we with one another? Declare. This is what was spoken. Leader, in your situation at the university, there where you study, there where you work, you better stand up and declare what God is saying. You better stand up and declare. But don't dare do that if you don't get into the word. So you, as a leader, your responsibility is to make sure that you get into the word. Because everything will pass away except the word. Everything will be shaken. Until the unshakable will stand. And that is the one that built on the rock. The revelation of who God is. Amen. That's number four. Number five. We're talking now about Solomon. It was the other word in this week. 1 Kings 8. 1 Kings 8. Verse 24. You, you have kept your promise to your servant David, my father. With your mouth you have promised, and with your hand you have fulfilled it. Let's say, your mouth promise, your hand fulfill. So it will be, my brother, you as a leader, you stand. But you don't stand alone. You stand in the name of of so many, many, many promises coming from 
Where? From the beginning. Right through. Adam. Abram. And the promises spoken to Abram. Like Solomon said, the promises spoken to my father through God's hand is fulfilled in my life. So there's promises given to Abram, Isaac, Jacob, David, those guys that need to be fulfilled through your life. There's promises from your grandmother's 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 grandmother who prayed and spoke the word and declared and believed the word. And those promises from the mouth of God, what she spoke was from the mouth of God accurately, prophetically, by faith in the name of Jesus. And some of the other generation, it will be fulfilled by the hand of God. Through a servant who will respect the hand of God. Hello? So there's so many promises that God wants to fulfill in your life and through your life, through his hand, if you can respect what was spoken through his mouth. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Amen? May God help you to understand his word and that what he said there, with his hand, he's going to go f and fulfill it through your life. But you know, even today, when you speak his promises, when you declare his promises, when you pray his promises, somewhere, if it's not in your life, it will be God's hand over your children, God's hand over your grandchildren, and they will fulfill it. So, Mr. David, get everything ready. Get everything ready for the building of the temple so that when Solomon takes over, everything is there, he can just build. It's there, he can just build. And you know, you prepare with prayer. You prepare with what you declare so that the next generation, so that your child can just get in and start to build. Because with your prayer, with your declaration, with your faith, you've provided everything already for your child. Just to move in and to build. Because of what you've provided in the spirit. Ah, I, I, I know it's nearly one o'clock, but please, are you with me still? Yeah. We declare that there will be air conditioning. <laughs> Amen. God's going to help us. Okay. Where are we now? That was number five. Number six. Daniel. The other man. In my day words. Was Daniel 10. Daniel 10 verse 12. Got this, just this verse, and I was amazed when I opened it up there. Then he continued, the angel, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. I, the commander of a third of the angels in heaven, I have come in response to your words. In response to your words. My brother, so you can, we can speak death over one another. And the devils are standing ready to come in response to your words. To fulfill what you've said in the life of your brother and in the life of your sister. In the life of those people in that political party that you don't like. And the devils are ready for you to speak so that they can come in response to your words and destroy other people. Or, let it not be so like that. Let it be in response because from a heart that was right with God and a humility, really seeking his presence, seeking his face. The word says, from the first sentence, from your mouth, heaven is resonating. Heaven heard and reaction took place because of what you prayed. Oh, may we have a prayer lifestyle like David. No, David and Daniel, this man, Daniel. Amen? Are you with me? Let it be so in Jesus' name. Is there no here? Can we read it once again? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Since the first day you set your mind to gain understanding, 
to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your Lord. Your words were heard. You set your mind to gain understanding, not that you now have the understanding. He set his mind to gain understanding. Things happened even when he did not understand yet. He set his heart to understand. He set his mind to understand. Now he's trying to understand. You are in prayer and you're trying to understand. You, you don't understand in the name of frustration. You give it up. Why? Mr. Mr. Daniel don't understand yet. But he has set his mind to understand. And in the process, the moment when he set his mind to understand, he's still confused. Heaven responded. Heaven responded the moment that he set his mind to understand. He didn't understand yet. Are, are you with me? There's still confusion. And you could find yourself in a place of confusion. You don't understand. But your heart is set on God. Heaven is moving. Heaven is moving through that prayer from your heart, even though in your emotions and in your mind you are still confused. Heaven is moving. Are you with me? Don't let the devil fool you out of your prayer life. That because you don't understand now what's happening, you're not getting a breakthrough. Tell your neighbor that's rubbish. Okay. That was number six. Number seven. The last name I had was about Naomi and Ruth. Ruth is not more than Richters of the Rajas. Ruth? Where is Ruth? Ruth. One verse 16. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Now, understand here. Um, she didn't encourage her. You know, like you expect of leadership to encourage you to come with. Uh, are you with me? Look, Naomi said, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. I understand if you want to stay, you are so welcome with me. No. Go back with her. <laughs> that is what Naomi said. You ever found a leader that told you, um, ah, please go, just go. Just go. Um, go and serve your own whatever. Go and do whatever you want to do. I don't want you necessarily to come with me. If that's a moment to take offense. That's time when you can take offense. Because um, the leader is rewarded by you following him. Ravish. Are you with me? You have the honor to follow. To follow is an honor. You know how it happened? God followed himself. Jesus followed the Father. Whatever the follow, Father said, whatever the Father did, he followed. So the whole concept of following is a beautiful concept in a relationship. And in a relationship, it will just naturally start to happen. You will follow. You will follow the one that you serve. You will follow the one that you're intimate with. You will follow, the, you will follow the one that you admire. To follow someone, there's a beauty in that. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That means when you go the wrong road, God will still be there. It is as if God will follow you. Not into the rubbish, but he will be with you. Has he met me? Child go his own way, but father will go with. But God says, follow me. What is he saying? Let me lead. Let me be the leader. And now you follow me. And if you go astray, I will come to you. I will follow in the steps and take you, but take you with me. 
Amen. The question is just who you will follow. So he says, she said, at the end of the day, your God will be my God. My brother, my sister, you need to have leadership that you follow where you will say, his God will be my God. Dr. Jonathan's God will be my God. Not because Dr. Jonathan is perfect. His God will be my God because his God is perfect. He is not perfect. You don't follow a leader because he's perfect. You will not find that one. But you will follow the leader who is the God of that man. Are you with me? So that even though that man make mistakes, you follow perfection because you follow the God of that man. You follow the God of that man. You serve the God of that man. Amen. But then there's a challenge for you as a leader. Last one. So that I can say, my God will be their God. Every day. My God will be their God. That is what you need to say as a leader. When people are looking at you, where you are involved with people, people working for you, people walking with you, people when you are wara wara there in a student house, what you can do with your cell phone after 10 o'clock, so that the others that you are busy with there can say, I want to compromise and listen to the devil like this guy is doing. Sure. Or, I want to follow God as he is following God. That a student can say that to a fellow student. I want to serve the God the way that you serve him. But that you as a leader can say, I'm asking you today, where are the people that God has placed with you where they need to say, your God will be my God. Let's say that. My God will be their God. Because you're going to be an excellent leader. You're going to allow Christ to be the leader through your life. And they will follow the God that you serve. Come Holy Spirit, please, and do that in our lives, through our lives. We trust you for that in Jesus' name. Be glorified in and through our lives, Lord. We choose to grow up in your presence, not in the presence of bitterness or fear or anxiety or in the presence of our circumstances or hurts or disappointments. No, we will grow up in, the, in your presence, Lord. We choose that today. We will learn together what is good and pleasing in your sight, Lord. Teach us your ways. Please, Lord, as leaders, we will remember we have leadership because you are with us. And our leadership is found in you where you decide who we are. God, and you say we are mighty warriors. Thank you, Lord. We take that because of your presence in our lives. We will declare your word. When the enemy come, we will declare your word. Help us then, Lord. I pray for every man, woman here that we will so, so get into your word, Lord, so that we will be not deceived. We will not be deceived by the enemy. But we will stand accurately with you and you alone. In Jesus' name. God, in whatever you said, let it be so. Let it be done to us according to your word. You speak it forth, Lord. Your hand will fulfill what your mouth promised. Thank you, Lord. Let it be so in our lives. And thank you, Lord, that we can give ourselves for a lifestyle of prayer. Teach us that lifestyle of prayer that Daniel had, Lord. So that when we open our mouths, heaven, heaven will respond. Heaven will respond. If we see the breakthrough or not, God, we will pray. And we will stand faithfully in prayer. Because we know that we know that we know that as we surrender our lives accurately to you, Lord, heaven will move the moment we open our mouths in prayer. Thank you for that, my Father. And thank you, Lord, that we can follow you. But help us have mercy on us. Let your grace be upon us, your enablement, so that we will understand how to live such a lifestyle that people will desire to follow the God that we are serving. Help us to do that, Lord, so that we will be not spectators in the end time more and more, but that we will be so part of the end time church that will bring forth 
your word, your heart, your love to the nations so that the nations can be saved. Do that in our, through our lives, Lord. So we pray in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen, Amen, let it be so.